Hey guys, I'm Manu Louis, and welcome to my latest video. So, as you can tell by the title, we're going for another World Cup squad predictions. This time, we're doing Germany, and um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Word of, ad not advice, I can't think of the word, just, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to try and keep my videos from now on under 10 minutes, because basically, it takes a hell of a long, much longer time to upload the videos and also my voice starts kind of going after like 10 minutes I don't know if you've noticed in some of my longer videos so I'm going to try and keep them a bit shorter also just so I don't bore you because who wants to sit and watch me talk about something for like 18 minutes it's just it can't be that entertaining so kick off with the starting 11 and the goalkeeper it's Manuel Neuer I mean he's probably the best keeper in the world at the minute um, even though Bayern have been knocked out of the Champions League by Real Madrid, he's still one of the best keepers and I can't really see anyone else starting for Germany unless he gets injured um, and that, in which case it will be the substitute goalkeeper which I will, will actually mention later on in the video when I talk about the subs and we're, next we're going with the first centre back which is Mats Hummels from Dortmund and he's basically their main defender. Um, I believe he's the captain as well. Um, he's just a brilliant leader, a brilliant header of the ball, brilliant defender. He'll jump into like, like uh, last ditch tackles, but not recklessly. Like he doesn't often get sent off or get any concede fouls. He's a very, very good defender. In the other centre back spot, we've got Jerome Boateng. Now, I think he's quite an underrated centre-back from Bayern Munich because a lot of people just talk about Dante and they talk about the other defenders such as Lahm and Alaba. But Boateng's a really good player. Like, He doesn't get bigged up enough and he's a really quality centre-back and he's just absolutely beast and, to be honest, he's much better than Dante. Um, next, we can go with the left-back, which is Marcel Janssen. And he's pretty much almost unknown to people unless you play um, FIFA, uh, FIFA Ultimate Team. <clears throat> oh, my throat is going again. Uh. Anyway, um, yeah, if you've played FIFA Ultimate Team and used uh, German Bundesliga as well, you probably know that he's a really decent left back and he features a lot in the German national team, so that's the reason why he's in the, the squad. Now at the right back we have Philip Lahm. He's just he's been there for a long time. He's always been a right back. Although this season he has been playing at um, centre mid this season for a few games for Bayern Munich, which is kind of weird because I've always seen him as a defender. I mean he does adapt to that position quite well, but I just think he's much better at right back. And uh, next we're gonna have the um, centre mid. Sebastian Schweinsteiger just no introduction needs saying because he's just he's always been there since since he first got onto the footballing scene um, he's always been quality he's always been a great leader great tackle of the ball great attacking player a brilliant dead ball specialist a brilliant at corners free kicks those sort of things penalties and he's that centre he's that I'm not really sure you could call it, but maybe the gear that sort of makes the whole team work and he just dictates everything and without him, the team falls apart because he's just a brilliant player and he just holds up the team. I mean, I'm not saying he's a one-man team, but he is very important to Germany. Now, the left mid spot, the fan favourite, Marco Royce, the man from Dortmund, in my opinion, one of the best left mids in the world at the minute. Um, he's not even, like recognized for a lot by anyone he's like sort of quite underrated like a lot of people do think he's really good and he did win Borussia Dortmund's player of the year award from, that, from their team but a lot of people don't give him the recognition that he needs and I think in a few years if Dortmund start doing a bit better in the league maybe getting closer to Bayern because Bayern seem to be a bit in the Champions League they seem to be a bit vulnerable and towards the end of the season they seem a bit vulnerable so maybe in the next couple of seasons Dortmund can do really well and Royce can lead them and maybe he'll be up for the Ballon d'Or you never know but I do think he's a really good young talent and in the future he's just going to be one of the best players if not for Germany if not for 
for the entire world. Now if you're wondering why I'm wearing a different top now is because basically my camera died when I was filming the video before like um, I filmed it the last night from when I filmed it but when you're watching it it'll probably be a couple of days ago my camera died and I was recording late at night and I didn't really have time to charge it because my camera takes absolutely ages to charge that's just why I'm doing it the next day basically and basically I now got to my favourite player on the list Mario Goetze now Mario is he's just an amazing player he's one of my favourite well not one of he's the my favourite Bundesliga player my favourite German player he's I mean come on have you seen his hair it's just like oh, it's so awesome um, but mostly he's just an absolute beast he's a great passer great dribbler shooter he can score really a lot of goals in fact last weekend he um, scored a hat-trick for Bayern Munich against oh, I can't remember what team it is I think it was Hamburg, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. Could have. Uh, it might have been Schalke. I can't even. I can't even remember. But he scored a hat trick last weekend, and he's a really good creative player. He's one of those players that can just set all the players up. Like even though a lot of people don't like him. Like normally, I don't like players who ditch the team that made them good for more money. And he did that. He moved from ba um, Borussia Dortmund to Bayern Munich, and even though you say that's a bit of a traitor. He's he's not as cocky as players such as Van Persie and um, I can't even think of any others off the top of my head. But um, Nasri, that's sort of another one. Uh, players like that that just leave the club that made them big to go and <clears throat> to go and play for a club that's given them more money. Ro Wayne Rooney did that as well when he left Everton and went to Manchester United. Um, next we've got. Tony Kroos, he's just a, just a solid midfielder, good defender, good attacker. He's just got everything you want. He's like a Schweinsteiger, but a bit less experienced, but he is really good. And he's been on Manu's target list for ages, but it's come out recently that he doesn't really want to go there. <laughs> probably because of the bad season they've had, really. Um, they're probably not going to be in European football. They, they have, do have a teeny weeny chance of being in the Europa League, but... Players don't want to play in the Europa League, they want to play in the Champions League. So Crows, if you want to join a Champions League team, join Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Unless you, well, I love to have him at Liverpool. Um, the right mid, we've got the all-around good player, Thomas Muller. Couldn't remember his first name then. But Thomas Muller is just an absolute beast. He's got decent pace. He is brilliant at dribbling. He's got a really good header as well, which most wingers don't normally have so if he gets in the box and corners and free kicks he can he can cause problems and yeah he's pretty much all around player he's got speed he's got dribbling he's got he's very technically gifted like he will just be able to think in a split second which the best pass is to play like say there's three people running one on the right one on the left one in the middle He'll probably he might see someone marking the person on the middle, someone marking the person on the left, the person on the right's free in a split second. It was pass it straight to him and creates a goal scoring opportunity. Next we've got Miroslav Klose, and he's been around for ages. He's in his mid thirties now, I believe. Um, I think he's going to be retiring soon. In fact, I think this is probably going to be his last World Cup, which is a shame because he's a really good player. I think he was the top scorer in. The last World Cup, don't quote me on that. It's just what I think. And he's been scoring goals for Germany for ages. It's just a pity that he's never won the World Cup with them. I don't think it's a shame. And I mean, maybe this is the year that he can do it. Also, you could have in that spot um, Mario Gomez, although he hasn't really had that much of a good season with Fiorentina. But he is a very good player, and he's often in the German national team. And he has a similar play style to close, so he's that target man sort of player. On to the substitute bench, and the players we've got is the goalkeeper, Roman Weidenfeller from Borussia Dortmund, who's just, he's a decent keeper, probably not as good as Neuer, but he's a very good keeper. We've got the left back Schmelzer again from Borussia Dortmund, just a really good left back. Um, he plays a lot in the national team, it, him and Janssen sort of alternate, and it's, um, he's a really good defender as well. He's not as tall as Janssen, but he's bit faster in real life 
Uh, then we've got Pema Osaka, the tree as I like to call him, because he's just so huge and on FIFA he's really slow, even though in real life he's not actually that slow, but I just call him the tree because he's just... It's like fucking tree beard from Lord of the Rings, but German. Um, then we've got Sammy Kadira, the midfielder from Real Madrid, who hasn't really played for Real Madrid that much this season, I don't think, but he's probably going to be in there because he's a quality player. And then we've got Drew Lee, there. Julian Draxler, and he's a really up and coming young player. He's just, he's just one of those players that's and starting to announce himself on the big stages. He plays for Schalke, and they're not the biggest team in the world, but he is starting to be a big player. And it wouldn't surprise me over the summer if a lot of big teams could start offering for him, like such as Real Madrid, Liverpool, Man City, Chelsea, PSG. Those sort of teams that can afford to pay that much money and are going to be in the Champions League, which is what. He, is probably aspiring to. And then we've got Andre Schurler, the midfielder that plays for Chelsea. And I really like Andre Schurler. Like, I'm not really a fan of a lot of Chelsea players, but Schurler is a really good player. He can play on the right, on the left. He can even play like down the middle. It's just he's just an all-round good midfielder. And the last player on the subs, we've got Lucas Podolski from Arsenal. I've been a fan for Podolski uh, quite a while, mostly because of FIFA, but... Um, I'm again. I'm not really a fan of that many Arsenal players, but he is a very good striker, and I honestly can't know why Arsene Wenger doesn't play more. Why does he play Giroud? Giroud is absolutely crap. Why not play Podolski, who's actually a decent player? He proved that when he scored against Bayern, even though Arsenal went out, he did get a goal. So overall, for Germany, I think they'll do really well in this World Cup. To be honest, they've got a good strong squad, a lot of depth. They've got players that can play in every position on the bench and in the reserves and that they'll be taken to Brazil, hopefully. And to be honest, I'm actually backing them to win it, probably, the entire competition because they've got some really talented players. They've got good defence, good midfield. The strike force is maybe not the best, but it's got closer. It was just ridiculous up front. Just so good. So yeah, I'm actually going to go for them to win it, even though I'm English and obviously I want England to do as well as they can. I do think it's probably Germany's year if England aren't going to try and win it, but obviously I will support England. But more on the actual predictions of how Germany will do in the World Cup in another video. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed. So if you could please leave a like because it really helps me out. A comment just to help me improve. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time.